is this really the best book of the year? By the way, if you like videos on how to grow your customer list and build a real brand, then subscribe to my channel below as I have new videos each week. It's the Morning Marketing Machine, here to grow your e-commerce business with proven marketing strategies and tactics, so you can run your business with machine-like precision. My name is Douglas Levin, let's dive in. Hi, my name is Douglas Levin, and I built a 20,000 person messenger list ahead of the launch of our first product, which led to 20,000 in monthly sales within the first three months of launch. I also have a link to a free cheat sheet below with tips on how to take control over your e-commerce income. Are you wondering what book is actually going to be worth your time? Feel like sometimes you start reading a book and then you just want to put it down like five pages in because you feel like it's a waste of time or it's just really, really boring. So it kind of gets to the point that you just don't know who or what to believe anymore. There's definitely times I know I felt like that, uh, but then I came across the book Shoe Dog. Um, I had heard about this book for a long time. Everyone I respect says it's an amazing book, but I just never found the time to read it. So I finally decided to give it the, the attention that it was deserved. And that's what I'm talking about in this video. So on the surface, Shoe Dog is a story about the history of Nike and its co-founder, Phil Knight. But as you read further, you learn about business, the struggles and the triumphs, and what it takes to persevere with both your brand and your life. When I hear the names like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, Steve Jobs, I get this sense of intimidation. I feel like they're on a level that I just can't begin to imagine. Um, and along with that, I feel like they're not even a person I can relate to. So right or wrong, their success puts them like on this pedestal um, where it's just really hard to identify with them. But Phil Knight, on the other hand, he does an amazing job in this book of letting you into his life his thoughts, his struggles, and all the times throughout his life that it all went downhill. Um, you can see yourself talking to Phil and finding things in common with him, uh, seeing him as just like another business, like another person that you're talking to in your mastermind, like talking about your troubles, his troubles, uh, trying to deal with like factory issues, late shipments, product quality, um, uh, work-life balance, getting home to read the kids a bedtime story, right? So it's just like you can identify with him in a, in a way that a lot of people can't. This year has been a big revelation to me in terms of reading, like the power and knowledge that it gives you, the mistakes that can be avoided and the lessons that can be learned on my road as both a business owner and a person. Uh, so as I'm trying to lead a more content and happy life. Um, so this year I'm going to read more books uh, than the rest of my life combined. Honestly, it might be double <laughs> the rest of, uh, of my life. And Shoe Dog is one of, if not my favorite book that I've read over this year. Um, the theme of family is talked about over and over again his relationship with his father, his relationship with his kids, um, along with the relationship with his family, uh, the ups and downs that we all go through. Um, he's laid out in this book, like us as a business owner, we go through the exact same stuff that he's talking about here. Um, so like his mistakes, his lack of acknowledgement to his loved ones, um, both on his family side and his work side in terms of like um, uh, how he relates to his coworkers and his employees. Um, it's, it's something I've never really seen a business owner talk so openly about um, because it, it's just like, like, as I said before, you're like, like you kind of see yourself like you're just talking to just another person um, who's worked their butt off uh, to get where you see them today. Oh, and if you're liking any of this, make sure to leave a like below. Even at the level that Nike is right now, his company could have gone under numerous times. Uh, that's the fight that all businesses have to deal with regardless of their size. Uh, the Apples, the Amazons, the Googles of the world, they all seem too big to fail like right now. Um, but they also said the same thing about Sears and Xerox and Woolworth, right? Um, from this, uh, like from his battles to the manufacturer, to Adidas, uh, to, to actually fighting the United States as well, um, he lays it out uh, and is very honest. And, uh, and he, as you talked about like the ups and downs that have gone on in the life of his life and in both his brand's life, Nike, which is actually like blue ribbon when it started off. Like, I didn't know that. Um, so for as huge and massive as Nike has become, the reason that they were able to stay in business is the simple fact that they were honest. Uh, they didn't try to be something that they weren't. 
Um, and as a result of that, they've stood the test, the test of time. Um, there's numerous times in the book where he basically talks about these points in time where they could have gone under or like um, they were trying to sell or um, they were in a court case with their, with their manufacturer and it could have gone very badly for them, but they put everything out there. They put the, the good, bad, and the ugly out there, right? And so as a result of that, like, um, like the sales reps loved what they had to do because they had a track record. They were honest, right? And in, in the court case, uh, when they were trying to fight in the U.S. against uh, their manufacturer in Japan, um, uh, they were also knew that there was going to be some warts that were going to show up in terms of spies that they had in the in the Japanese facility and they had they had discussions like well what do we do here but what ended up winning out was being honest and that's how they ran their company and that's how I like he talks about it over and over and again in the book that's why they were able to succeed and they and honestly it's why they've been able to stood the, the, the sand to taste the, the test of time um, so it, it helps you as a business owner to understand that you can have success by, uh, by being a, an honest company. It's, it's not something that you have to just sacrifice as you're trying to be a business owner. So it, and it's also hard to remember that as huge as Nike is right now, they used to be a two person operation. It was just him, Phil Knight, like selling shoes out of his car. Um, but you never really lose that sense of, who he is and like how he got started and that road that led them to be where they're at now um, as you read Shoe Dog. I'll admit I didn't know a lot about Phil Knight before reading the book, um, but any business owner, honestly, any, anybody um, should be reading this book. Um, besides being an amazing book that every business owner should read, it's a great sense of storytelling. Every year from 1962 to 1980 is discussed in his life and in the life of Nike. Um, it, he talk, He takes us, the reader, from the beginning. He's like a kid still living at home, uh, wanting to go on a trip around the world. Uh, to the end, when Nike is going public, and he's, he's going to make uh, Phil Knight a millionaire. Um, and he goes over what his life has been like since the end of the book, too. Because, uh, obviously, a lot has happened since 1980. Um, so he kind of goes into kind of like a recap a little bit of what happened since 1980 till the book was put out. I think I want to say it was 2016. Um, so in that um, 36 years uh, since then, he kind of gives like a recap and, and you start to identify with like all of the cast of characters that were part of his business and a part of his life. And he kind of tells you what happened to them. Uh, like some of them unfortunately passed away. He has some bad falling outs with some of them as well. Um, but he's, he's honest about that. Um, so he kind of talks about that at the end of the book. Like in, in some ways, he's also like hinting at the meaning of life. I mean, us as business owners, when we're doing this, you kind of lose track of things. You get into your own bubble and you try and every day, especially if we're e-commerce sellers, right, where we're, we lead that lonely, lonely existence. Um, but there's a reason behind what you do. And um, just kind of reading this book, it kind of helps you remember what that is. Like what, what gives you a little bit of clarity as to like why you got started. What are you, what are you going after? Like obviously like when we do this and we're at it for a little while, you love what you do and you get obsessed with it. Um, but also remember why. Um, so that's kind of hinted at a little bit here toward, towards the end of the book as well. So I cannot recommend this book enough. Everyone needs to read this and have this a part, a part of their reading list. You will, not re you will not regret this book, unless of course you're Adidas. If you're looking for more tips on how to take control over your e-commerce income, then click the link below in the description for a free cheat sheet. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips on how to grow your list and build a real brand. All right, bye.